Welcome everyone to week nine of the CAA football season. I'm Carly Smith here with Rob Washburn bringing you three things to watch. And Rob, as we know, anything can happen in the CAA. We're now over the midway point of the season and it just ramps up from here. Quite a few impressive performances last week. Maine and Richmond both showcased dominating defensive efforts in their win on Saturday over nationally ranked Villanova and undefeated Delaware. Rhode Island churned out an impressive second half to defeat UNH and stay unbeaten in conference play. Stony Brook took their punches from Towson and just fought, fought, fought with an electric 52 to 24 win over Towson. The Hawks stuck with their MO and piled up 584 yards of offense in their win against Bryant. Hampton, okay, let's talk about the Pirates. Winning on the road at North Carolina a and is one thing, but winning on homecoming, yeah, that's a feat of its own. Tip your hat to head coach Trent Boykin and company. Rob, plenty of other highlights, what'd you see? Yeah, Carly, along with the games you mentioned, Elon's Chandler Brayboy earned National Special Teams Player of the Week honors after tying a CA record with two kickoff returns for touchdowns and win for the Phoenix at UAlbany. And William & Mary rolled up 355 five yards on the ground got past Campbell 35-28. We are not even to the halfway point of CAA play and there are eight teams within the game of first place with only Rhode Island and Richmond still unbeaten. It's going to be a wild race to the finish. First let's highlight two teams who are going to pull up the bootstraps, roll up the sleeves and go to work this week. Number 13 Villanova hosts New Hampshire. Both of these teams are coming off of losses but we know in this league you can never dwell, only increase that appetite for the next win and we know both of these teams are hungry. Connor Watkins and Seth Morgan, excited to see those two generals of the offense go head to head. Rob, what are you looking for? Yeah, what I'm looking to see is if these teams can bounce back, especially on the yeah. offensive side of the ball. Both of these teams have been able to generate plenty of points all year long, but neither of them got into the end zone last Saturday until the final two minutes when the outcome of the games had been decided. <laughs> Turnovers and special teams miscues were part of the problem, but UNH was held to 20 yards rushing and Villanova had only 35. Now, as you've mentioned, Connor Watkins and Seth Morgan are capable, experienced quarterbacks with a talented group of receivers to throw to, but both of these defenses they will be facing are way too good to become one-dimensional on offense. It will be vital for UNH's Isaac Seed and Villanova's David Avit to get going on the ground in what is a critical game for both teams to stay in the hunt for CAA title. Let's hear from Villanova's Mark Fronte and New Hampshire's Rick Santos. I said it last week going into Maine. Um, I, I see the same thing on some of the New Hampshire film I've been watching. Each week, as you have a new guy each week, the more they play together, the more they get on the field together, the timing becomes better. They're able to distribute the ball. They're trying to figure out who their guy go-to guys are and so on and so forth. We're going back to just kind of the mantra, it's the next one. It's obviously a big one based on us losing a little momentum last week, but we got to find a way to play clean in all three phases. Um, you know, even in some of the wins we've had, I, I don't know if we've played a complete game, you know, in the last three or four weeks. So we want to make sure that we can clean up some things internally, uh, focus on on our process, what we need to do better, and, and find a way to go 1-0. Watch this game at 3.30 p.m. on NBC Sports Philadelphia and Flow Football. Up next, our second thing to watch, Oh, here we go. Number 15, Rhode Island plays host to Maine. The Black Bears are coming off of the statement 35 to seven victory over number five Villanova in week eight. They're putting some electric performances together, causing havoc on defense and showing play making ability on the offense. Rhode Island, three and in league play, riding the momentum from a road win at New Hampshire. Their defense went to work last week, forcing four sacks and two forced turnovers. Rob, thoughts on this one? Yeah, Carly, it would be hard for two teams to come in to a game with as much momentum as these two do. Maine was the FCS National Team of the Week after beating its highest ranked opponents since 2018, and Rhode Island got a win in Durham, New Hampshire for the first time since 1995. Now, most impressive were the efforts on defense where they kept Villanova and UH out of the end zone until the game's final two minutes. For Maine, the black hole defense is back. The Black Bears have allowed 260 yards or less in three of their past four games, and last week they recorded seven sacks against Villanova. Leading the way is Xavier Holmes, who tallied a career-high five quarterback hurries against the Wildcats and has three sacks in the past two games. Now, Rhode Island recorded 12 tackles for loss and four sacks at UNH, while holding the Wildcats to 235 total yards. 
Devin Hightower had three TFLs, AJ Pena made a couple of sacks, and Frederick Millet added a forced fumble and an interception. This will be an intense, hard-hitting battle where points can be really hard to come by. Here's what Rhode Island's Jim Fleming and Maine's Jordan Stevens had to say prior to kickoff. We've got a very good Maine team coming in here. It's the next CA, it's the next step, and uh, we're going to put together a good practice and go play a good game. And, and like I told them this morning, the only thing I'm after is just be better. I want to be better this week. I think we've shown consistent improvement throughout the year. Huge test for us going down to Rhode Island. Um, I think it's their homecoming. This is a team that's undefeated in FCS play and uh, top of our conference. So for us, um, really, I mean, just being able to show growth every week, you know, that's our mindset is like, you know, getting better game seven to game eight, you know, clean up the things we didn't do well in this game. All eyes on this one at 1 p.m. on MeTV and Flow Football. Finally, our third thing to watch, drum roll raw, <laughs> Stony Brook welcomes number 16, William & Mary on Long Island. Stony Brook's offense exploded against Towson last week, and we're seeing record-shattering performances from quarterback Tyler Knopp, and running back Roland Dempster is making a name for himself. But Rob, would we really expect anything less under the leadership of Billy Kosh? Now, William & Mary pulled off an impressive homecoming win over Campbell last week. The Tribe can kick it on the ground, having rushed for three 355 yards against the Camels. They bring a surplus of weapons to the field. Rob, what are your expectations? Yeah, my expectations, Carly, are for points and plenty of them. Mm -hmm. All season long, we've been talking about Roland Dempster and the Seawolves running game, and he did his party against Towson last week with his fifth 100-yard rushing performance in six weeks, but it was the passing attack that took center stage. Tyler Knopp threw for a career-high 387 yards and a program record six touchdowns as Stony Brook posted its highest point total since 2017. Now, on the other side is a William & Mary offense that churned out 355 yards on the ground against Campbell, which was the third time in four games they've gone over 300 yards. The dynamic duo of Bronson Yoder and Malachi Emo were at it again, with Yoder picking up 131 yards and a touchdown, and Emo close behind with 122 yards and a score. Now, William & Mary has scored 27 more points against all six of its FCS opponents. Both of these teams are ranked in the top 25 and have CA title and playoff berth on their minds. This game could go a long way towards reaching those goals. Now let's turn it over to Stony Brook's Billy Kosh and William & Mary's Mike London. You know, historical program for sure. They've won a lot of games. they got a lot of returning players that have won a lot of games in the past, so they know how to win. Um, you know, you talk about their offense, almost 34 points a game. Uh, you're almost rushed for almost 300 yards a game. You're doing something right, you know. Um, so they do a really good job offensively. They stretch you horizontally and vertically. Uh, make you cover every blade of grass. Coach Kosh has done a, an outstanding, outstanding job. I've, I've known him in the coaching profession for a while, and uh, he's done a really good job over the years of where he's been. You know, obviously, when you have a quarterback, the guy that touches the ball 100% of the time, when he can facilitate and get the ball to your playmakers, um, you know, make uh, make those uh, the throws at the, the high efficiency rates in terms of completions, you know, and get it to players, the receivers, the running backs, the tight ends, that can do yards after catch. So th that that's a complete offense right there. Kickoff is at 3.30 p.m. on SNY and Flow Football. Now let's check out our full week nine schedule. Red Hot Richmond will travel to Bryant to begin the CAA football Saturday. Monmouth plays host to Towson. Never an easy week in the CAA, that's for sure. Hampton hosts Elon, both teams riding the momentum of strong performances and wins in week eight. Delaware looking to rebound against UAlbany for homecoming weekend at Delaware Stadium and to wrap up the day Campbell hosts North Carolina A&T both of those teams vying for that first win in conference play all of that and more coming your way this weekend make sure you follow along at CAA football on social media and visit caafootball.com for results recaps and more enjoy it